of May, Monster Comic Reviews. Our hundredth episode. Yeah. I thought I deserved chainsaws. Uh-huh. Yeah. No juggling? We could have taken the whole tree down. I only have one. Oh. So oh. just throwing one in the air isn't juggling. So, oh. so I figured, right. you know, can't afford three. And I had to come back on five months to juggle. Okay. And I know. Well, in that case, no And we don't have any cats, so I couldn't mix a cat in while we did. Or anything like that. Hey, anyway, right? Hey, I appreciate you watching us all this time. Um, Cut videos, I guess, is a big deal. I don't know, we cranked out 30 in a row there. Yeah. They were really short, so part of me feels kind of like cheating. part of me feels like it's cheating, like we haven't really done that many videos, but at any rate, um Oh well. We'll celebrate it anyway. Yeah. So let's talk some comics. Okay, first up we have All Star Western. Night of the Owls, what you think? Number nine. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so we tie up the um, the them chasing Moody down in Louisiana. It's all a big ploy. Um, they knew exactly what they're doing. They basically suckered the whole group, that whole crime group, to expose themselves, and then, yeah. and then, um, took them all out. And then Cinnamon and um, Nighthawk jumped in, and you know, all of them they whooped up on them one night. Yeah. Then they tracked down their their um, bounty, Mr. Moody. Of course, Mr. Moody is also being chased down by now. By now. Um, I appreciated that the owl was in this so little because in the other comics. It's Fighting the owls, which makes sense because this is where the owls take over Gotham. Uh -huh. But in this issue, the owls are still secretive and they want nobody to know about them. So it made sense to me that the owls showed up long enough to kill Moody and then jump away right. and didn't try and fight them. That made sense to me. Well, just right. Uh, yeah, I appreciated that part. Yeah, um, it's it, the amazing part is, of course, you, know, you mentioned that they, that they move like an acrobat. He's familiar with acrobats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We find out that he had a wife. Uh huh. He obviously doesn't like talking about his wife. No. He's on Arkham's second time mentioning his wife. What, yeah. what does he do? He punches Arkham in the face. Face, yep. Basically telling him to shut up. And then we have this girl at the very end that's wearing Is an that eye Arkham's patch. Wife? Or Arkham. not Arkham's wife? Jo um, Hex's wife? Well, I don't know. I think she's all scarred <laughs> up for the same reasons he is. I don't know. I don't know. I got the impression that maybe that wasn't the case, but maybe so. I don't know. I mean, if that's the case, it's a little, I mean, I kind of hope it's not. Yeah. Because it feels to me like, oh, they mention his wife, and then suddenly his wife shows up. Yeah. Seems a little too uh, uh -huh. to, together. Uh -huh. But, so that'll be interesting. Now, obviously, that's going to be the next storyline for her, her issues with the land grab. So yep. the rich guys are doing land grabs, you know, and not paying people off for the land grab. So, um, and they're a little enforcer, kind of Zorro-esque kind of guy. Yeah. With the whip and stuff. Um, it's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, I, I, enjoy, I, you know, I enjoyed this book. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate the fact that he didn't really spend a whole lot of time on the Carter Battles, just kind of mention uh -huh. who it's there to give us the impression that it's been around for a very, very, very long time. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, as a whole, I liked it. Um, yep. It wasn't incredibly exciting, but it was a good tie-up for that, them chasing down the thing. Um, I'm curious to see what stories we have going forward, um, just because, to some degree, the stories are starting to feel the same. Uh-huh. Do you think? Yeah. Yeah. So, um looking forward to the next to the next arc to see if we get, get off on different. get off on some other adventures mm -hmm. um, I, I'm really oh one of the things I want to talk about was I'm really happy last issue I was complaining about the fact that our Arkham was doing this whole opium and dump thing and be a total oh, idiot yeah, whatnot. Yeah, yeah. that was all just an act uh-huh yeah because I'm like oh come on Arkham shouldn't be that stupid but um, so yeah I was happy that, that was just a big act to get this whole thing going and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'd rate this book a uh, three yeah I give it a solid three yep okay so next we're going to talk about um, Animal Man, annual number one, which of course the first curiosity is, is it hasn't been 12 years and usually that, I mean 12 issues, and that's usually when an annual hits. Uh -huh. Whatever. Anyway, so this gives us, this kind of whets our whistle as to what a, a Swamp Thing Animal Man team up would be like. Yep. But it's set in the past telling us a story about yep. another time this happened and whatnot. Yep. Um, it didn't really whet my whistle though. Uh, really? I'll tell you right now. No, it wasn't like, oh wow, this is what it's going to be like. It wasn't the same. It's not no. the same characters. No. The characters we have in our current continuity, I have, an, I have an investment in. Uh -huh. This was just more like a history lesson of and, sorts you know, it felt, and a curiosity. And, and it felt less big because of the, yeah. uh, the well, rot is all over the place. Well, but, you know, it's already taken out in this, so we know it's probably going to end well. Right. That's, that's already been, um, yeah. So, in the past, and the rot isn't as widespread as it is now. Yeah. The, the one thing that I did think was interesting, the one scene where he has kind of a vision of the future, 
And yeah. it shows all the superheroes, like Wonder Woman is all, and, uh -huh. and Batman, they're all, all, all they're all dead. Their skeletons are like hung on the um, uh -huh. lamp posts of some destroyed city or whatnot. Whoa. Yeah. That's kind of epic and whatnot. Uh -huh. um, and he kind of sees Animal Man, our Animal yeah. Man of sorts, it seems. Um, that part was interesting. I mean, it wasn't a bad story. It just, what was the point? Yeah. Other, other than to show, ooh, they've teamed up in the past. Mm -hmm. that, these, that historically, these people have teamed up in the past. Yeah. I think they could have given us that in a regular issue and somehow imparted to us that piece of history. Yeah. Maybe, obviously not in detail, but, but did, yeah, we, did we need so this in detail? Not necessarily. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't bad. I mean, I'm not saying that it was bad. I'm just saying that it wasn't, it wasn't necessary. Yeah. Um, I liked it. Um, I like the fact that how Animal Man, when he cried blood, I guess, uh -huh. his design that was left was that tree thing. Right. Well, this guy, he's definitely out in the West. His is this, like, cow skull western kind of right, thing. Uh, that, was, that was cool. Yeah. Um, that was interesting. Um, I thought it was cool that everybody, that the entire town decided that they were going to go take out the rod. It was like, oh no. I mean, I love how they're kind of like, oh, it's some sort of witchcraft. Right. They're like, let's go shoot it. Yeah. Yeah. Because that totally works on witchcraft. Well, it's me, the stuff. engine. It must yeah. be that stinking engine. He must yeah, have done yeah. it. Yeah. And then so, find out he's actually part of the good guys. Yeah. Uh-huh. The, the psycho guy yeah. um, is actually a swamp thing now. Mm -hmm. um, that was cool. Um, the guy in this, the red guy, he's kind of kind of in the, he's both, he's both like the knight that Buddy Baker is with the power to draw on animals, but he's also like an avatar, like his daughter Maxine is. Mm -hmm. So. I think he's more the avatar. I think he's more the avatar I think he was too. The, I think he was just the avatar uh -huh. from before. And yeah. that's why Socks was telling the story. This is the story yeah. of how this and works then, for this avatar. Uh -huh. Cause you know, you, we see later that the rot, they keep killing the rot and it keeps coming back. And what they do is they end up pulling, he obliterates the flesh off of the rot because they're still somewhat living. Right. right so right. he completely destroys anything there that could be possessed mm -hmm. by the rot. He pretty much vaporizes it. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, so I wonder good. if yeah, Maxine cool. can do stuff like that. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure she can considering the fact that I mean she's done stuff like die real quick so she can turn back into sure. through somebody else's something else's, else's body. body and then reform herself. Yeah. Yeah and she rises up somewhat dead animals yeah. so yeah yeah that was and that was interesting yeah yeah so yeah. what would you rate this book um i'd give it a solid three yep yep it was inter it was entertaining mm -hmm. okay next What's up next? we have the bat manual the batman annual the manual. first one so is it a manual or is it an annual it's an annual oh okay so it doesn't give us how to run batman okay. no okay it's not that cool <laughs> um of course, this gives us the, the background to Mr. Freeze. It's not officially the, the new the, the first appearance of Mr. Freeze in the New 52. That was in um, it, briefly in Outlaws. Red Hood and the Outlaws, um, which of course I didn't care for that issue. Um, I really enjoyed this. It gives us a new perspective, which of course I don't know like you knew Mr. Freeze's old past. I mean, in his Who's old that? past, in his old past, the person he's referring to as his wife really was his wife. Yes. He actually was married to her. This is a different twist. This turns him into, instead of, I, I go back and forth on this. I mean, I really like the story. It was well written. Um, I, I like the art in it. Mm -hmm. I like the delivery of the whole thing. Um, it's a good obsession story to show that, that that Mr. Freeze is obsessed with this woman that he's really never met. She's been an ice cube mm -hmm. the entire time that he's been alive. Yeah. Um, but he's obsessed with bringing her back because of course now she can be fixed through modern medicine, if you can just figure out how to re, you know, reanimate her, far out safely or whatever, um, and, and so it's it's cool. And I like characters that are obsessed with something and whatnot. But it almost feels like it took away something from Mr. Freeze because Mr. Freeze before was kind of a noble. Yeah, saying? he had a noble element to him. I'm fighting for my wife, not 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 crazy person fighting for my wife, who's not even his wife. Right. I'm fighting for my real wife that I truly really love. Bad things happen to her, and I'm trying to figure out how to make the world a better place so I can have my wife back. Yeah. Uh, some piece of that, regardless of whether he's doing it all wrong and bad and whatnot, some piece of that we can we can look at and go, oh, this is a good little piece of the guy mm -hmm. because he really it's a noble thing. Granted, I guess in this there's some nobleness to it too. He's going to bring this woman back to life and, and get her fixed so she can live the rest of her life because she's mm -hmm. this young woman who hasn't gotten to live her life. 
Yeah. But there just seems less of it there yeah. because there's nothing true about it. Mm -hmm. What happens if he does figure out how to reanimate this woman? Yeah. There's no guarantee she's well, going to like him at well, all. Well, and it's not just that. He's lost the obsession then. Then, then yeah. what? Yeah. I mean, you know. Exactly. Um, what'd you think? Um, I, it was okay. Um, I, this is the, well, counting right ahead in the outlaws, this is the third time I've ever seen Mr. Freeze in a comic book because okay. a long, long time ago when Batman and the Outsiders was still Batman and the Outsiders and it didn't suck, they fought Clayface and Mr. Freeze and Mr. Freeze trashed them all. Uh -huh. Oh, you saw him another time. Yeah. You just don't remember. Really when? Remember in, um, remember in Firestorm, the Jason Rush one? Oh! Oh, Mr. Freeze, Killer Frost and Mr. Freeze are teaming up and they're icing the place and whatnot. That's right. He comes in that. and saves the day and then Batman basically tells him, don't screw up, I'm watching you. Yeah. And he's like, yes, sir. No, sir. Okay, sir. And then after he leaves, he's like, oh, that was so awesome, which is yeah. a great scene. That's I why I remember that. that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And though, but, um, yeah, yeah. Um, I kind of knew Mr. I didn't really know the full of his backstory. Right. I, kind of knew, I knew that he was fighting to some degree to save his wife, but I didn't know anything beyond that. Right. Really. Right. Um. And yes, I always, I always like Mr. Freeze in the cartoons and the animations and whatever it's when I cool saw him those. because he, he was cool, no puns intended, <laughs> and he wasn't crazy. I liked right. him because, I mean, he wasn't some sort of wacko mob boss, yeah. and he wasn't one insane. Of the, yeah. One of the world froze him just because he can operate easier if it's frozen. Uh huh. Right. But just kind of a smart, yeah. methodical dad. Yeah, yeah, he knew what he was doing. Yeah. He wasn't crazy. He was just kind of like, ah, ha, 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 let's right. press this button. It was like, we're going to do yeah. this, 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 and this. And he, is a little, and he is a little more mad in this comic. Uh-huh, yes, definitely. Except um, he didn't seem mad. He didn't seem mad in the Red Hood and the Outlaws, though. No. So maybe the Red Hood and the Outlaws, he's a little past that. And this is, well, it's supposed to be the same timeline, because it's yeah. one of the Alice thing. But he seemed, less, he seemed less together in this. Mm -hmm. Maybe because he was so close to his wife. I guess. And the I whole, that whole thing? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um, I like the, the him back when he was a kid um, stories in between the whole actual story. Right. The, where he makes a snowman and his mom falls in and you find out that she's never been quite right and she's kind of yeah, in the process her. of dying and right. she's crazy and she's probably one, yeah, so well, he tosses her in the... Pushes her back in the next year mm -hmm. or whatever back into the... Yeah. Yeah. That was sad, but seemed fitting to some degree. Well, Not like if well, my mom and, went crazy, I'd push her into an ice thing. But um, yeah. You wouldn't. No, and he's crazy, so. But. Yeah. Well, yeah, that, I think that goes to show that there's a, a homicidal part of him. Uh huh. At a very young age. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed it though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I would give it a strong three. I give it a strong three too. Yep. Okay. I actually saw three. That's fun too. Oh, okay. Saw three. Okay. Yeah. So we got that all these little big as bus pliances. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. So next we're gonna talk about I Vampire number nine. Okay. First of all, I love this cover. It's absolutely amazing. The covers are awesome now. It's yeah. you know Andrew Bennett, but his mouth has been elongated and opened wider than usual, and we see his big nasty sharp vampire teeth. He's sitting here, and the it's like a movie poster. It's like bite, pray, love instead of you know eat, pray, love. Yeah. And then he's got you know the hands down at the bottom and his shadow that are done in white to show because he's the a frogs, leader. The frogs yeah, yeah, out, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Some um, badass messiah. Yeah. yeah, and then we find out that he's not. He's <laughs> taking them all to Utah. Yeah, out in the middle of the hot, hot desert. Yeah. Unless it's the perfect place for a vampire, isn't it? Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome, and he pretty much. He's having trouble leading them, and it pretty much comes down to, okay, you have a problem with the way I lead. You guys can all go eat all the humans you want to. You just have to get to me. You just have to go through me. Uh-huh. Yep. Calls and them out, and everybody's like, I oh, crap. Never mind. Yeah, because I mean, he, he just annihilated a guy. Yeah. Like, earlier in the thing, yeah. one guy is, like, really backtopping and whatnot. Uh -huh. he, he wipes him out. Yeah, he's like, shh. And I guess he's been, he's been going into town and um, buying up all the cattle. Uh -huh. All the stockyard cattle, yep. so that's what they've been feeding on, which I guess sucks if you're a vampire to eat eat cows. Um, so yeah, so he comes yeah, back. Yeah. He comes back. People are still moaning and groaning. He's like, "Fine, be fine. that way. This Take, is what we're gonna do." Yeah, come at me. And then Mary, Queen of Blood, is like, "Okay." Yeah, she's, she's like, like yeah, "Okay, sure. here's the deal. I I, I'm gonna take I you fight. Out. I fight you, I win, I take my army back, and we go do our own thing. Uh -huh. You win, obviously, you win, and you control everything." Yeah. Yeah. That Meanwhile. 
Meanwhile, the um, Tig and Tig and what's his face? William, is that his name? Yeah. Professor. They feel that they need to rein in Andrew Bennett and the vampires uh, or alive. something. They go to the Hellsings. So they go find the Van Hellsings. Which, which are an elite, like I don't know, they're like a SWAT team of vampire killers. They're like, like a nation of vampire killers. Yeah, kind of a thing. Well, like a they nation. Have, I mean, they, they have, they have an entire a, fleet, dude. Well, they have a castle and they have quite a few airplanes. But obviously, they're well organized, kind yes, of a thing. Yes, so now they're and, flying and, over to deal with the vampires. Right. After they drugged them all and everything yeah. and whatnot, knew yeah. that was coming. They're like, so, they're like, okay, well, this is all the important information you need. They're like, here's some drinks. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Why? Well, he just mentioned how crazy they were. Yeah. They, you know, but so that's really interesting. Yeah, it shows all these bombers flying mm -hmm. along. You're assuming they're flying to Utah yeah. to, to deal. bomb the vampire nation. Ooh. That'd be a good way to get rid of a few vampires. Yeah. Just napalm the place. Uh huh. So. Um, I really like this comic. Yeah, I really like uh, this comic I, too. I, it's yeah, pretty amazing. I, I'm, I'm digging it. Um, I personally, I give it a 4 out of 5. Yeah, 4 out of 5. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what's next? Next up we have Justice League Dark, issue 9. First issue of um, Jeff Lemire writing it. Yep. Um, really like this. Um, new team, that's cool. Got rid of some people. Um, <laughs> I don't know if they added anything to the, to, the, to the book necessarily. Got some new people in. Those people are already more dynamic than some of the old people yeah. were. You know, they're a team. They act like a team. Yeah. Well, yeah, they're actually organized as a team. The great thing is, is they give them a reason for all these kind of high-powered, crazy mages to be uh. working together. Um, so, so that works. They're kind of working through the government. They're, they really are kind of a, a Justice League now. They actually are fitting that role more because they're working for um, um, Steve Trevor and yeah. and the and kind of a branch of the justice league so they actually have a reason to be called justice league dark now whereas before it didn't make any sense at all uh -huh. um so that part's kind of okay i still hate the name of the comic book but but at least now it makes some sort some level of sense um you, you've got um um black orchid in the book yeah now. watching black orchid She's randomly cool. pop into well watching random people on the team randomly shift and shift into black orchid she is pretty them. cool yeah, yeah it's like pfft. Yeah, Push. she can change it. She can look like anybody. She can transform to looking like anybody. She's got super strength. She got some other powers uh -huh. we'll see coming down the road. You got this other, um, <coughs> oh, God, I'd like his name. Dr. Zygais, I don't know what I can come his name is. The voodoo kind of guy that they save, that they rescue yeah. the thing. He's going to become more kind of a liaison part of the mm -hmm. team now, too. Um, that's going to be cool. I, I love how, I mean, this isn't my Constantine, Hellblazer Constantine. But I like the way they're portraying him. They're doing a good job. Mm -hmm. He's still kind of he's still kind of a Shady, kind of a kind shifty of kind of a shifty bastard of sorts. I mean, he's doing this. Why is he doing this? He's doing this because he thinks he's going he to be able to get into that Uber room full of all the magic crap. Right. The holy he's going to go into the room of all the holy grails basically, and he's hoping to be able to pinch as many of those things as he can. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that's going to be um, that's cool. Yeah. Great motivation. The book's already. I mean, I hate to say it. I like Pierre Milligan, the old writer, mm -hmm. but but this book is infinitely better already yeah. off the bat. Um, this is what it should have been from the very beginning, mm -hmm. and so it's fun. They, of course, they reintroduce Faust back into the thing, yeah. which is great because I mean he's a I he's like a, Felix he's, Faust. He's, a he's a good he's a good um, magical villain. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. they put back in the back in the thing and whatnot. Um, so um, yeah. I I like this issue. It's was, it was pretty good for the reasons that you said. They're fighting Faust. We find out that Faust has summoned up some other unpleasantly creatures with uh, as the, per usual. with his map. They're giant spider people. Yes. No. You. Bad. Ew. No giant spider people. Ew. No. Ew. No, yeah. no. 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 Yeah. No. But very cool. Yeah. Definitely awesome. It was cool watching them. It was cool watching them pull some tricks with Black Orchid. That was that was cool. Yeah. They function as a team. We find out that Zantan that most of the people because Zantana really is the only one of them who's recognized as a superhero right right you know so well if she's in the group a lot of the other people will be easily are convinced and so they do they join the group sure. because zantana wants to get into well zantana wants john's constantine to get into the room so he can grab zatara's R well stuff. he has said hey i saw a picture <coughs> and in that picture this other stuff was there yeah Zatara's did he crap. did he really see a picture that has all that stuff in there or is he lying through his teeth i don't know i think he's lying through his teeth yeah so <laughs> Which will make interesting stories down the road if that's the case. Yeah. 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 So. What we rate this book? I'm giving it a solid three. All kinds of cool characters, uh -huh. and it's actually picking up a story that I'm, I'm excited about to see happen and whatnot. So, next we're going to talk about Sixth Gun, number 22, a non silent issue. Yeah, this issue is so cool. Um, 
we find out that Drake had Drake has probably previously already collected all six of the guns. This is the, the huge before reveal. Before they were guns. Yeah, the huge reveal is when about middle of the comic is that um, Drake is he, the guy. He, he goes, you know what? Uh, you know that when I when he got tangled with the zombie, the zombie whispered something. The mummy was whispered something in his ear. Basically, hey, look, you've redone the world once before. Do it again. And of course, in the case of the mummy guy, he wants his girlfriend back. Yeah. But so that leaves this whole. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, that's huge. That the fact is, is that maybe, and Drake doesn't know for sure. He's thinking, okay, maybe I have done this. Yeah. That would explain that giant mosaic we talked about off camera. That looks like Drake. Uh -huh. It looks like Drake. It looks kind of medieval. Looks ancient. Yeah. Maybe he has. Because it was probably Drake. He's had the swords back when they were swords. The guns back when they were swords. Yeah. So that. Was so are the swords of, the swords of Solomon? Right. Swords of Solomon. Is that what they're called? Yeah. They're still chasing after him. The rest of them get mm -hmm. mulched, basically get wiped yep. out, or a whole bunch more knocked out. And they have one the head honcho yep. who's got the the personal beef with Sinclair. Yep. Tries, Shows up, tries taking him out. Drake totally pulls, he turns the tables and tortures the guy for hours and hours and yep. hours, and then leaves him for dead. And Big mistake. And then he gets rescued by snake, snake people. people. Yeah, I'm not sure what I think about that. By the whole snake people thing. I don't. Uh, mean, we may be jumping the shark there. I guess, yeah. Just, just a little. Yeah. I, I'm, I, we'll see. We'll see what that is. It's the only part about like I'm like, mm, I don't know. But, but really, the big thing is, is, you know, is Becky's okay. What are we doing now? And he kind of reveals. It looks like it sounds like maybe, I've already done this once. Mm -hmm. You know what happens? What happens now? Yeah. Um, huge. So, that's huge. I mean, yeah. I, I read that and I'm like, holy crap. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's that's huge as far as the, the, the bigger. Um, Mm -hmm. Storyline goes. And yeah. Whatnot. Really, really enjoying this comic. I don't think this issue was as good as the last issue, as far as just pure no. excitement. But the story Definitely and what, as lot. far as the as far as the big world plot goes, huge, yeah. huge, huge, huge. Mm -hmm. So, what would you rate this? One? Um, I'd give it four. Yeah, pretty awesome stuff. So, yeah. is that it? Yeah. Is that it for the last week? Uh huh. In our hundredth video. I want to thank everybody yeah. for, like I said again, for uh, watching the people. All who your point, views. Yep, the people who point out, point out um, that we're somebody you should watch and whatnot. Um, we we appreciate that. Um, we love talking comics, and you know, um, you know, in particular, I like talking with all you guys and reading the comments if you comment and whatnot. So please do um, let us know what you like, you don't like. Um, if we're reading books you think we're crazy for reading. Let us know we're crazy for reading those books. So we'd love to have the conversation as to. Why we think, so crazy. What, yeah, you know, or, or, or whatever. Um, and like I said, thanks for watching. Uh, for those of you who've actually watched 100 videos, <laughs> thanks for watching them. Uh, we hope to have at least 100 more. Yep. Anything else? Not really. Bye!